Before we begin with our opening sentence, I just want to take a moment to welcome you here to Mount Calvary Catholic Church for our festival of nine lessons and carols. Now, I'm sure some of you are familiar with this, which is made famous by King's College Cambridge. This service is broadcast on BBC every year. Uh, what you may not know is that this was started before Cambridge by a bishop who was concerned by how much drinking was going on and he wanted to get the British men out of the pubs and off the streets. So now that we've succeeded in getting you out of the pubs tonight, I think we've already had a success. When I was uh, in a university course on English history, the professor pointed out that no matter what our ethnic background, if you're in an English-speaking country, then you are connected to English culture because so much culture is conveyed simply by our language. For this reason, she said how important it is to understand English history because we understand the origins of the ethos that we pick up whether we know it or not. And so it's a privilege as part of Mount Calvary Catholic Church, which was an Anglican church, an Episcopal church in the broader Anglican tradition, the Church of England, to become Catholic and to help us to be connected to these broader roots that have formed our culture. Now, with a name like Sharbach, um, I'm not especially British myself, but my first experience uh, going to England uh, was after spending three days in Paris in the 90s. It was a good time in Paris, but it ended rather roughly. So let me tell you this. When I was traveling on the train uh, into England, uh, going by those houses that looked romantically familiar with the houses that I saw in my children's books growing up, it felt like a homecoming. And it was on my way to the Vicarage Gate B&B, &B, where, looking a little bit lost, a man in a collar, much like mine, stopped me and said, can I help you? And he directed me to my address. And then he said, we're having a lesson in Carol this evening. Why don't you join us? That was my first experience with lessons in Carol's. It was a night much like this, cold, damp. But being in the warmth of that chapel and hearing the warmth of the voices, I truly felt home. At this time, in the midst of a pandemic, missing experiences like this, it is my privilege to welcome you home as we sing familiar songs and we experience the warmth of one another, even the warmth that the gospel generates by this, these traditions that we hold so dear. So as we just prayed in the sacristy, let us lift up our hearts to him who has come down to us, so that in song we might recount the truths of our redemption and own them anew and live them by the grace of God. So we will begin with our opening sentence and then the familiar beginning to this great tradition of lessons and carols. Watch, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning, lest Coming suddenly, he find you sleeping.
beloved in Christ. At this holy season, let it be our care and delight to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels in heart and mind, to go even unto Bethlehem and to see this thing which is come to pass, and the babe lying in a manger. Let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. And let us make this house of prayer glad with our carols and praise. But first, let us pray for the needs of his whole world, for peace and goodwill over all the earth, for unity and brotherhood within the church he came to build. And because this, of all things, would rejoice his heart, let us at this time remember in his name the poor and the helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick in body and in mind, and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, all who know not the Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved the heart of his love. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no man can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in this Lord Jesus we forevermore are one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself hath taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen.
the first lesson, a reading from the book of Genesis. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow, shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Thanks be to God.
bleak midwinter frosty wind made bold. Earth stood on as high on water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, snow on snow. cannot hold him, nor earth sustain. Heaven and earth shall flee away when he comes to reign. In the bleak midwinter, a stable place of The second lesson, a reading from the book of Genesis. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Thanks be to God.
The fourth lesson, a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. With righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the child shall eat straw like the ox, the lion. And the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Thanks be to God.
The fifth lesson, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
the sixth lesson, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world shall be taxed. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that, while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Thanks be to God.
the seventh lesson, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go, let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe, lying in a manger. Thanks be to God.
the eighth lesson. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and we are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Thanks be to God.
lesson, the beginning of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who makest us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of thy only Son, Jesus Christ, grant that as we joyfully receive him for our Redeemer, so we may with sure confidence behold him when he shall come to be our judge, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Let us pray. Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, grant you the fullness of inward peace and goodwill, and make you partakers of the divine nature. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Now before the final dismissal, just a brief announcement. So just by logistics, we've mentioned that there'll be a festive end to our gathering. And so we are creatively finding ways to, to gather together and put an explanation point on our event um, in a reasonably socially divisive uh, distance nature and so that will include two uh, fire pits on the on the outside uh, the narthex and uh, and behind the church by the parking lot two so that we can distance appropriately and uh, and some food downstairs to be handed out without buffet uh, hand pies uh, so that we can uh, go forward and begin to anticipate the great feast which is around the corner and so there'll be, uh, for the children, there'll be opportunities for s'mores at our fire pits and with, with reasonable supervision that we've already assigned uh, for our children. And so let us give thanks for this opportunity uh, to fellowship. But also, I'd like to take a moment to give thanks for during our worship service, uh, of course, we, we don't applaud uh, because we're here just to have a singular focus on the Lord. And that does not change in a service like we celebrate today, uh, where it's not a performance, but our musicians have spent hours, years, a lifetime, cultivating their talents by the grace of God, and then come together so that His grace will bring together something that is far more uh, than the, the mere sum of their parts. So we give thanks above all to God, but now is a good time, though, to show our appreciation for God's gifts to Andrew, who is our choir director, who pulled all this together today, as well as our singers and our musicians. Thank you. And now, by the grace of God, go forth in peace.